Hi everyone, I'm just going to do a very quick um, recording for you regarding British values. So I'm just going to share my screen so you can see what I'm looking at. So I've got a PowerPoint here called um, talking about British values and obviously as part of your apprenticeship you need to know about them and we haven't looked at them yet but I thought it'd be a really good idea to give you this PowerPoint. So you literally just work through it and have a read. Um, and the first objective is to look at a mind map. So what I want you to do is just at home, just a little spider diagram and off of, off of your spider diagram, if you can write down the British values from memory, if you can. If you can't, that's fine, don't worry. Um, and the next slide will tell you what they are. And then it goes to a little bit of a fun activity where it tells you being, what being British is about. So you're looking at those sorts of things there. Um, and from that, um, it looks at, it wants you to have a look at um, the rule of law, which is one of the British values. We've got one there already to start you off. And it asks you questions regarding the rule of law, different law, um, different things that you know that you need to know about. And then from there, if you actually set that up as a slideshow, so if you have a go at them on a piece of paper, and what I've done on your fold, on your drive, I've put um, a Word document that goes with it. So these are your answers. So for the rule of law, you must be so-and-so to drink alcohol. So if you have a crack at it and try it and put the answer in there, you can send this to me afterwards or upload it back to the drive. And then at the bottom, I put, did you get them right? Play the PowerPoint slideshow and the correct answer will flash. If you actually um, select from current slide, it'll actually show you when you move on which one's correct. So there's one given for you. So it'll do that. And then work through those. And then at the end of the um, of that, it goes through, there's an activity here and it tells you what to do. So you have to, we did this with adults, but you get someone to sit with their back towards the board and you, and you start, get this PowerPoint running and you show the rest of the room sees this picture and they've got to describe it to the person with their back to the board, what they see. And the idea is that obviously they're talking about that person in a, acceptable way we're describing them in an acceptable way without any prejudice or discrimination there um, and there's lots of different ways where you might get different things coming up obviously so we've got people with disabilities we've got people of different races religions controversial people um, so that's a really good activity to sort of have a discussion around British values so I want you to have a think about have a look at that and the, the um, if you go back to the understanding document here so the first bit is obviously rule of law. Um, so I want you to do that, that little quiz there. The next part is individual liberty. So I want you to have a look at, um, have a look at that, um, those people that I've just shown you those pictures. Um, you can have a look at that to see, give an example of individual liberty and how you might promote it in your classroom setting. That's one idea I've given you, but you could come up with your own. And then tolerant, respect and tolerance of others is there. And that's again, very similar. So you could use the activity I've just shown you and obviously give an example for yourself and what you do in your classroom. And then the last one, which I haven't written at the top and I'll add now, is your democracy. Um, and I want you to give an example of how you promote democracy in the classroom. So you can use my PowerPoint to give you lots of different ideas. Um, you can also go to one called the British Values Finger Model, which I've added. And this is a way of remembering British values. So it tells you um, your democracy, rule of law, your tolerance of different cultures and, really, and religions, mutual respect and individual liberty. Now there is only four of them, but it tells you how to remember them. Um, so you, your democracy, so you thumb up for voting, thumb down for, you know, thumb up or down. Your rule of law, I think it's um, uh, Aristotle. If you look at Greek philosophy, Aristotle was a, a teacher back in the Roman um, ages. And he pointed up to God and he was teaching Plato about something. So they're sort of saying the rule of law. He was teaching them about law at the time. If you look at um, the picture, it depicts um, Plato learning from Aristotle. It's in the, um, it's in the uh, Sistine Chapel in the Vatican City. It's interesting if you're into history. Um, so that's that. So you've got your democracy from up from down, your rule of law. Mutual respect is your wedding ring. So getting married, having respect for each other. And then your individual liberty sticks out on its own because you, you're individual and you've got your own liberty and, and things that you can do for yourself. 
in terms of freedom of speech and stuff like that. So it's a way of remembering it on your hand, which I thought was quite a nice thing to look at. And again, it gives you examples of each one. So what you can do in class to promote democracy, rule of law, individual liberty and respect and tolerance for others. So what I want you to do ultimately is to fill in this understanding, your answers. So give me an example of how you promote democracy. Go through that rule of law PowerPoint if you want to. You don't have to do it. You can give me some examples of how you promote rule of law in the classroom. But I thought that, that quiz was quite a nice one to do. See if you've got your rule of law knowledge, individual liberty. Give me an example. And then you've got respect and tolerance for of others. There is also um, on the drive uh, a lifeboat activity game. Um, and there was, there's two, there's a stereo PowerPoint apprentice activity. That's like the apprentice program with um, Lord Alan Sugar. And it's about firing somebody based on their characteristics. And then there's a lifeboat game. These are very much geared towards older people, but if you can adapt them for the children, you're more than welcome to use them if you want to deliver anything or you want to show them to your teachers and they want to do anything. So this one is a task. It's you're in a lifeboat um, because you ship sinking and there's 14 people find themselves together in the lifeboat, but only nine people can stay in it because it's going to sink. It's too heavy with um, all 14 in. So you've got to eliminate uh, five people from the lifeboat and you've got to choose so have a go at it because it's fun actually it's quite a nice task especially in the group so first of all you've got these people and you've got to decide who you would get rid of based on what you see there so do you want to get rid of mary 71 retired william 27 teacher joseph is 60 as a gp can you think that any of them might be any use to you to help you to survive on the lifeboat and then based on that if you want to pause it now and write your five down that you're going to get rid of and then now you're going to get some more information. So based on your five that you've chosen, are you still going to keep those five? Or based on this new information, are you going to choose different people? So you can pause that for a minute and have a go at that. And then have a think back. Was there anything there that you thought? Was there any stereotyping, labelling or prejudice? Did you think, you know, what was your thoughts about keeping Joseph, for example, who's addicted to drugs, did that make you think any less of him? Um, and what stereotype is behind that and judgment of people being addicted to drugs? You know, is it, are you thinking he's addicted to drugs as in cocaine, um, I don't know, cannabis, things like that, and it's illegal or is he addicted to prescribed drugs? Does that influence your decision about him? And you could go on about lots of these things about the different characteristics of these people. So Suki, you might have got rid of her, but now, and that, now knowing that she's pregnant, does that change your opinion? Have a go at it and you can document some of your um, prejudice and discriminatory, you know, if anything triggers off the back of that. You can put them at the bottom if you want. I can just put it there, prejudices. Discrimination. And if you want to add them to it, it'll help you later on in other tasks throughout your apprenticeship because you can then think, right, I can work towards challenging those and, and having that critical thinking about your own thoughts, which is a really good thing to do and have some reflection. You might not get any. You might be really open-minded, which is great. But if you do, we all do. You know, I get prejudiced thoughts, discrimination. We all do it. It's part and parcel of what, the way we are and the way society is. So that's it, really, for British values. I'm going to keep on questioning you throughout. We do look at them on the 12 week reviews, which are coming up any minute. So it'd be good to... Um, for you to have this knowledge. Right, I'll see you later.